Welcome back to the Two Minute Warning. Today we are back on the topic of the NBA, and with that we will be talking about the MVP race coming up. Um, one of the most, I would say, tightly contested MVP races we've had in a while. Um, there's just so many good candidates so far in this you know, wacky NBA season. So I'm going to be going over my top six candidates, and I'm going to be explaining why um, each candidate has a solid case, and then I'm going to go over who my favorite is and say why. So starting off, we got um, LeBron James is currently the front runner. Um, LeBron is averaging about 25, 8, and 8 a game right now at age 36. He's shooting a career high from three, which is higher than what he shot when he won the MVP in 2013 with the Heat, when he was shooting about 37% from three. Um, on top of that, LeBron has been very consistent all year. He's played in every game. He's, like I said, shooting a career high from three-point percentage, and you just can't deny that the man is aging like fine wine, and the Lakers right now are second in the West behind the Jazz, and I expect them to climb ahead of the Jazz relatively soon. Um, you just can't deny his greatness right now, and you know it feels like every single year that LeBron is you know in this MVP contention, and he just always gets snubbed by some guy. And I think that he's been deserving of the MVP for many years. I just think that it's kind of a rigged award, but um, LeBron is just putting on a career year once again honestly and continuing to prove all of his haters wrong so he's got a very strong case for the MVP and, and rightfully so that's why he's the front runner um kicking a step down we got Joel Embiid Joel Embiid is, is also having a career year he's averaging a career high in points um he's averaging 30 a game right now he's also shooting about 40 percent from three which is a very good clip for a center and also shooting about 85 you know percent from the free throw line which is is really good um Embiid is really blossoming, uh, and I think that the 76ers are a real dangerous threat to come out of the East, and Embiid is obviously the largest um, reason that they will if um, they decide to come out of the East. On top of that, I think that um, the, another reason for the Sixers' success is that they've been able to surround themselves with shooters, so their spacing is a lot better. Um, but to be honest, Joel Embiid is the real main reason that the Sixers are in contention right now. Um, he's career highs in every single statistical category. So he's got a very compelling case as well. Next down the line, we got Jokic, Nikola Jokic. Um, he's averaging 27, 11, and 9, which is insane um, for a center, almost a triple-double. Um, he's shooting about 58% from, from the field, which is a very good clip. Um, he's about to enter the 50, 40, 90 club right now. He's shooting 40% from three, close to 90% from the free throw line. Um, so he's carrying the Nuggets right now, even though they're only seventh in the West. You'd like to see um, Nikola get some help from you know some of his other guys, you know uh, uh, Jamal Murray, Gary Harris, you know guys of that nature. But still, you know the Joker continues to improve, and I believe he's you know him and Joel are vying for that top two center you know position right now, and I think they're nipping at the heels of LeBron as far as the MVP race goes. Next up, we have Giannis. He's averaging 28, 11, and five, kind of you know Giannis's standard numbers. Um, still very good and still worthy of putting him in the MVP conversation, but we've been accustomed to seeing Giannis carry and, and stat, you know, stuff the stat sheet with these kinds of numbers. You know, he's also shooting it well from the field, 56%. Can't ask for much more from him. The one thing, though, you can obviously point out is that the man cannot shoot the rock to save his life. He's shooting about 27% from three, which is honestly abysmal, and he continues to struggle from the free throw line. He just, he's not... <clears throat> He's not a player that is built for playoff success considering he cannot space the floor and that when the game slows down come playoff time, teams are going to be able to adapt and hinder his ability to just go nose down and attack the rack with ease. It's not going to be able to happen in the playoffs, and I don't think the Bucks are going to get far if that's their strategy. My last uh, guy here is KD. He's averaging 37-5, and five, which you know is, is mind-boggling considering he, he's been off of an Achilles injury. And he's also in the 50, 40, 90 club right now, shooting 45% from three, which is unheard of. It's almost like he got better after he got injured, which is just crazy to think about. Um, but KD, I think he's going to get overshadowed by the fact that he's playing with two other all-stars, with Kyrie, as well as James Harden. I just think it's, it's not going to be enough for him to get the MVP. But regardless, he's having an insane year, so much props to KD. And the Nets are doing well, the third in the East right now. So... Um, and the last, actually, that's not the last guy. Katie's not the last guy on my list. I misspoke. The last guy on my list is Stephen Curry. Now, Steph Curry is averaging the most points out of all these guys. He's averaging 35 and 6. Um, he's shooting 43% from three. Again, a 50, 40, 90 guy. 
Um, and in the last four games, you can see he, he scored 40, 32, 32, and 57, which is insane. Now, Steph Curry is my MVP, and here's why. Steph Curry is by far on the worst team out of all the guys I just named. He is carrying with guys like Juan Toscano Anderson, who is on a two-way contract in the starting lineup right now, a boomer bust guy in Kelly Oubre, a guy averaging career lows right now in Draymond Green, and is basically you know putting on a, a James Harden Rockets type year where he's had to carry and doing that with restricted minutes. Like he's had lots of stretches in the fourth quarter where Steve Kerr has decided to sit him, which is just you know beyond the realm of, rec of, of common sense for me. But he's regardless, he's he's being super efficient. He's still you know playing really well off the ball. He's just elevating the Warriors team to playoff contention. And it's just crazy to think about it because the Warriors were the worst team in the league last year when Curry was out. They haven't really added anybody significant. James Wiseman just went down with a broken hand. And so Curry is literally doing this all on his own. And he's averaging insane numbers and his team is contending for a playoff spot, albeit. He's not, they're not gonna contend for the finals. Um, a couple stats here to throw out. The Warriors are a negative 2.9 net rating when he's off the floor, they're plus four when he's on. He's um, Curry responsible for about 1.2 points per possession. He's a pick and roll maestro. You know, he's, he's probably the best pick and roll point guard right now, arguably. Um, Curry's just playing, you know, out of his mind right now. He's already put up a 62 point game this year. And for me, what the MVP means to me is the MVP is the most valuable player on a team. Now, most people say that you have to win in order to do that, but winning is a team statistic. It doesn't, it, one man cannot physically lead his team to a one seed. It's just not gonna happen. No one man, unless you're maybe LeBron James, can take you to a finals. And, you know, Curry is, is doing all that he can, like I said, with restricted minutes. He's only, I think, averaging the 31st most minutes in the league. He's, 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 got, he's playing less minutes than guys like Tyler Hero, Darius Garland. So he's not playing, you know, that much minutes, and he's still averaging the most points out of all these guys. And you can just tell when he's on the floor, the Warriors are that much better. And he basically is the only reason they can succeed because anytime that other guys get buckets, it's usually because they're trying to, one guy's trying to chase Curry off a ball, an off ball screen, and it leaves another guy open. And so he just, he just makes that Warriors offense work. And I just think that he is by far the most valuable player. I mean, you look at other guys, Joel Embiid, is he the most valuable player? Yes, but he's got help around him. Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, et cetera. LeBron's got AD. Jokic has got Jamal Murray. Giannis has got Middleton, Drew Holiday, all these other guys. KD, obviously. Curry, or not, not Curry. He's got Harden, Kyrie. Curry's got no one. He's got Zilch, Zilch, Nada. And that's why, for me, I think that Steph Curry should be the MVP at this point if he continues to keep up the stellar level of play because he is just that important to the Warriors and their success going forward that it's just, I, I mean, I don't, under, I don't know how else you put it. I mean, without, the war, without Steph Curry on the Warriors, they are the worst team in the NBA, by, by far, hands down. So with that in mind, Steph Curry is my MVP. Um, we'll see how the year shapes out. You know, it's still early. We're, we're barely a quarter of the way through the season. So a lot of things could change, but Curry has not missed a beat since he went out with injury. And people were worried that, you know, with five finals worth of load on his body, would he be able to bounce back and continue to perform? And he's done just that and more. And he's having a career year. And I think that because of that, he's deserving of the MVP. So, two-minute warning.